Hello, and welcome to lecture two of the Energy Fundamentals Unit in Phys 2104. This lecture is going to be concerned with thermal and source energy. We're going to develop your ideas about thermal and source energy in more detail, and along the way we'll have to have a preliminary discussion of temperature. To start with, I'd like you to think about the sort of situation that is hopefully familiar. Think about a carpet sitting on a marble floor. And if you stand barefoot with one foot on the carpet and one on the marble floor, what you will notice is that the foot on the carpet feels warmer than the foot on the marble floor. Well, does that actually mean that the carpet is at a higher temperature than the floor is? It may not be obvious to you at this point, or maybe it is, but in fact the marble floor and the carpet should be at the same temperature. Don't worry if that's not obvious to you, hopefully by later on it will be. In any case, what this is showing us, first of all, is that humans are bad thermometers. But second of all, it's showing that our sensations of warmth and coolness may be related to temperature, but temperature itself must be something more subtle. So let's state some assumptions. We are assuming that temperature is part of the state of objects, or in other words, it's a measurable quantity that describes objects, and it's connected with thermal energy. And second of all, as part of that, we're assuming we can measure it. In other words, that there's such a thing as a good thermometer. That may not seem like much of an assumption, but as we go on, you'll see that this isn't as trivial a statement as it might seem at first. But here's an example of a good thermometer. Think about an element on your stove. You turn it on and it starts to glow. And we know that it is at a lower temperature when it isn't glowing than it is when it is glowing. This shows us that somehow we must be able to analyze light emitted by an object and use that to determine the temperature of the object. Of course, the type of thermometer that you're used to is something like a mercury th thermometer. But what you're actually measuring here is the height of a column of mercury. So notice that in neither of these cases are you directly measuring temperature. In one case you're measuring a height, and in the other you would be measuring something called emissivity. So what we then need are calibration functions that allow us to convert those measurements of volume or of emissivity into a temperature. Whenever we have multiple ways to measure a quantity and different calibration functions that allow us to convert those measurements into the thing we're actually trying to measure, we always want to make sure that our calibration functions agree. In this case, we know exactly how to do this. Let's say we take any two objects and we put them in contact, and we know these calibration functions. So we should be able to observe, once they're in contact, that one is going to warm up and the other is going to cool down. This is because when they're in contact, thermal energy will flow from the hotter one to the colder one. This is, right here, the fundamental meaning of temperature. Any time we put two objects in contact, then thermal energy will always transfer from the higher temperature one to the lower temperature, and that this will keep happening until they reach the same temperature, and we call that thermal equilibrium. First of all, this meaning tells us that we should be able to resolve our two functions, f1 and f2. For example, we could take f1 as our standard and fit f2 to it. And second of all, this is our fundamental meaning of temperature. But let's think a little bit more about it. Let's say we were taking this mercury thermometer as our standard that we were fitting everything else to. Notice the scale on it. It's definitely linear. But why? That's saying that we believe that there's a linear relationship between the height of that mercury and the temperature of the mercury. Well, how do we know that? Why isn't it a log scale or a quadratic scale or something else? For that matter, if we put two thermometers at different temperatures together, then we're going to observe thermal energy flow from one to the other based on which one is at the higher height. That one's definitely the higher temperature one. And it doesn't matter whether we've used a linear, or a logarithmic, or a quadratic scale, we're still going to see the same thing happen. And all of these scales agree with this idea that 
the thermal energy must be flowing from higher temperature to low. So there seems to be arbitrariness here, and you might ask what the true relationship is between temperature and volume for a given mass of mercury, and whether there's even a way to know. Well, it turns out there is a way to know, but we're not ready for it yet. It's very complicated. And so I'm going to leave it at that for now, except to say that the linear scale is good enough. Let's check your understanding of this so far. Let's say we have three objects, A, B, and C, and we don't know their temperatures, but we do know how to tell when they're getting warmer or cooler. So um, maybe the easiest thing to think of is that these are just mercury thermometers, except they haven't been calibrated, so they have no scales on them. So we can certainly tell when they warm up because the column of mercury gets taller. When we put A in contact with B, we see no change to either one. And when we put A in contact with C, we can see that A gets warmer and C gets cooler. So what's going to happen when we put B in contact with C? 